Hello. In this video, I want to explain three phenomena, which I think can be explained much better using a kinematic model of the universe rather than what's commonly known as the standard cosmological model. These uh, three phenomena are called inflation and the dipole anisotropy and the cosmic background radiation. And what does it mean that the universe is accelerating? A couple of notes to make before I begin. Milne's model on Wikipedia is not representative of what A.E. Milne described in Relativity, Gravitation, and World Structure. Instead, if you look up Milne's model on Wikipedia, you get the description of some zero mass solution to the Einstein field equations. If you want to get a really good idea of what A.E. Milne, um, how he actually described his, mo his model in his own words, I would recommend going back to the original source. Milne's model is not exactly isotropic nor homogeneous. It is isotropic from the point of view of any non-accelerated observer, but if the observer experiences acceleration, then you would have a non-isotropic effect after the acceleration. Now what I'm going to do in this video is a little simulation of a big bang followed by another secondary bang. I'm not sure of the nature of this secondary bang, nor would I necessarily limit it to two. Uh, a big bang followed by a secondary bang. There might be a tertiary bang and a quad quaternary bang or whatever. There, uh, it might be an explosion of some unknown primordial co quantum mechanical nature, matter-antimatter reactions for instance, or secondary bangs of some cosmo uh, astronomical nature. Astronomical nature like massive hypernova explosions for instance. Now for the simulation, I'm going to use a piece of software I developed several years ago called an animated space-time diagram. You can see it and its source code at uh, jdoolin.spoonfedrelativity.com slash lt.htm. Now what, this, what the software does is it allows you to create arbitrary intervals in space-time. Here's a, a space-like interval in space-time. Here is a time-like interval in space-time. And if I get it just right, it will create a uh, a light-like interval in space-time. And then it animates by, you just allow time to pass, and you can see um, objects and photons move around. Now there's no, uh, this, there's no real general relativity in this, except you can apply a constant acceleration to it, so it will continually switch reference frames as it goes. Now what I'm going to do to simulate the Big Bang is create 21 objects, all moving at different velocities. Now their left-hand corner corners are all co-located at the origin, but their right-hand side extends a little ways off to the right. So I'm going to create what's called a quick object, which creates the object that I described, and then accelerate to the right and create another quick object. And I'm going to do this three times, four times, and I'm going to continue doing that 21 times. So I've made 20 of those, 21 of those objects. Now I'm going to hit this button 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now there should be a uh, a balanced set of objects that are all moving away from each other. Let's pass the time and see what happens. As you can see, you have uh, basically what represents an explosion, a one-dimensional explosion of objects moving apart to the left and to the right. Now I'm going to go back to the, in or pause it, go back to the initial condition. Now that event there is the Big Bang, and what I'm going to do next is have a secondary bang right here in the middle. So I'm going to move over 10 times, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You can see when I do this, um, the initial event moved back um, instead of being, I should bring it back, hold on. As you can see, the event right here is only 6.3 seconds ago, but when I change to a different reference frame, which way do I want to go? No, the other way. No. Okay, instead of being 6 seconds ago, it's 23.9 seconds ago. And all I did was accelerate it and change, change my reference frame so that I'm looking that way. 
this is basically a way of describing uh, the inflation phenomenon in special relativity without invoking any kind of uh, mysterious, really mysterious phenomenon. But I'm going to create a secondary bang here, which means I'm going to create 21 more objects from this point. One, two, three, and I'm going to pause it. Now I have this previous Big Bang event and this current Big Bang event. And let's pass the time from here. After this, this is maybe a hypernova explosion or some quantum mechanical thing, depending on the scale of time between there. But what happens? Now we have this intense speed catching up to whatever's outside there. Now what I think is going on here is, well, you would have out here a situation where the, your your redshifts are going to be surprisingly low as you get out past this edge here where this from this secondary big bang or the secondary bang and probably out here in this region where this hypernova explosion uh, is interacting with uh, particles from the earlier explosion, you're going to have a higher uh, frequency of galaxy formation or type 1 supernova. Might also be interesting to analyze if what if we had another uh, secondary explosion somewhere over here or something. Unfortunately that's going to make things very messy because my uh, software shows uh, past world lines from uh, particles that aren't really on that trajectory yet so I can kind of come up here and create another bang somewhere over here on particle 18 will explode so I made it a little bit smaller of an explosion with only 11 particles instead of 21 now the interesting feature is that from uh, the perspective of this explosion that explosion over there hasn't happened yet but when I or is in the future of this explosion but when I bring it back this way that explosion is in the future of this explosion so anyway if I pass time from this perspective this uh, sorry about these lines right bang oh shoot what happened oh that's right I forgot you can't click on the screen because it because it's sensitive to that. You can actually move the events around manually on here. So let's line that up again. So secondary bang happens and then sometime far 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 off the screen that other explosion is going to happen far in the future of this event and then maybe some something will happen and combine. But anyway, these were the questions I wanted to answer. What causes inflation? And the answer is if you accelerate inside a relativistically expanding sphere, then um, it's going to make the sphere bigger. It basically moves that origin event back in time. Um, what, co what causes the dipole anisotropy in the cosmic background radiation? Basically that is that this uh, secondary acceleration once we get up to here I'm gonna pause it with here and then um, ex follow one of these other particles and then pass the time and you can see the Big Bang happened way over there now and you're gonna have an asymmetry in the uh, in the uh, form of the of the sphere Na namely because this side is a little bit closer than the other side. And what causes the uh, universe to accelerate? Well it's because this secondary explosion is actually going much faster from our perspective than the stuff from that initial explosion and this is overtaking that outer stuff. And so if you're looking beyond those edges you're gonna see objects with lower than expected redshifts out beyond this uh, secondary, the boundaries of this secondary explosion. Well, thank you for t your time. If you have any questions, contact me. And uh, remember, the source code for that applet is on my website.
and from 2009. 